Today, the RBA pulls the cash rate trigger. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, one of this post covering finance and broad news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, the RBA has done it. It's the end of the road in terms of the ultra low cash rate. And just a quick reminder that tonight at 8pm Sydney time, I'll be discussing this news with Professor Steve Keem, who's in the studio talking about all things economic and all things political. So join me live and you can ask a question, of course. I'll see you then. In the meeting today, the board raised the target rate by 25 basis points to 35 basis points, and it also increased the interest rate on exchange settlement balances from 0% to 25 basis points. The notes from the announcement today said the board judged that now was the right time to begin withdrawing some of the extraordinary monetary support that was put in place to help the Australian economy during the pandemic. The economy has proven to be resilient and inflation has picked up more quickly and to a higher level than was expected. There is also evidence that wages growth is picking up. Given this, and that very low level of interest rates is appropriate to start the process of normalising monetary conditions. The resilience of the Australian economy is particularly evident in the labour market, they said, with the unemployment rate declining over recent months to 4% and labour force participation increasing to a record high. Both job vacancies and job ads are also at high levels. The central forecast is for the unemployment rate to decline to around 3.5% by early 2023 and remain around that level thereafter. And this would be the lowest rate of unemployment in almost 50 years, sidebar until such time as they lift the migration input. Remember that we've got nearly 500,000 people out of the country at the moment who were previously in employment. That's why the rate is so low. The RBA went on to say the outlook for economic growth in Australia also remains positive, although there are ongoing uncertainties about the global economy arising from the ongoing disruptions of COVID-19, especially in China, the war in Ukraine and declining consumer purchasing power from higher inflation. The central forecast is for Australian GDP to grow by 4.25% over 2022 and 2% over 2023. You heard that. A significant drop next year. Household and business balance sheets are generally in good shape. An upswing in business investments is underway and there is a large pipeline of construction work to be completed. Macroeconomic policy settings remain supportive of growth and national income is being boosted by higher commodity prices. Inflation, they say, has picked up significantly and by more than expected, although it remains lower than in most other advanced economies. Over the year to the March quarter, headline inflation was 5.1% and in underlying terms, inflation was 3.7%. This rise in inflation, they say, largely reflects global factors, but domestic capacity constraints are increasingly playing a role and inflation pressures have broadened, with firms more prepared to pass through cost increases to consumer prices. A further rise in inflation is expected in the near term, but as supply-side disruptions are resolved, inflation is expected to decline back towards the target range of 2 to 3%. The central forecast for 2022 is for headline inflation of around 6% and underlying inflation of around 4 and 3 quarters percent and by mid-2024, headline and underlying inflation are forecast to have moderated to around 3%. Those forecasts are based on the assumption of future increases in interest rates. The bank's business liaison suggests that wages growth has been picking up. In the tight labour market, an increasing number of firms are paying higher wages to attract and retain staff, especially in an environment where the cost of living is rising. While aggregate wages growth was subdued during 2021 and no higher than it was prior to the pandemic, the more timely evidence from liaison and business surveys is that larger wage increases are now occurring in many private sector firms. 
Given both the progress towards full employment and the evidence on prices and wages, some withdrawal of the extraordinary monetary support provided through the pandemic is appropriate. Consistent with this, the board does not plan to reinvest the proceeds of maturing government bonds and expects the bank's balance sheet to to decline significantly over the next couple of years as the term funding facility comes to an end. The board is not currently planning to sell the government bonds that the bank purchased during the pandemic. The board is committed to doing what is necessary to ensure that inflation in Australia returns to target over time. This will require a further lift in interest rates over the period ahead. The board will continue to closely monitor the incoming information and evolving balance of risks as it determines the timing and extent of future interest rate increases. So there you have it. A few points to make. First, of course, this really does throw a large pebble into the pond of the election campaign at the moment. After all, Scott Morrison is campaigning on a, being a great economic manager, but now interest rates are rising, costs of living are rising, and we know that many households are already under the gun. So you could argue that perhaps this step from the RBA is also going to have a significant impact on the election campaign. We'll see. Second point, of course, is this. The rising rate of inflation is expected to continue for some time and will probably get worse, particularly seeing the international flows coming through. Third question, of course, is how does raising interest rates change the supply disimbalances around the world? Supply and chain disruptions are clearly part of the problem when it comes to driving inflation higher. I'm not sure that lifting interest rates will necessarily address that. So we may see inflation running higher and longer than we think. But then, of course, the final point is this. Even a small rise in rates will have a significant and immediate impact on mortgage rates and on people's disposable income. But more importantly, it also will have an impact on the psychology of consumers. Will they spend less? Will they decide not to buy that new property? And will banks also change their underwriting standards? It'll be interesting to see whether APRA now intervenes and also lifts the interest rate buffer that's required because we have to expect interest rates are going to continue to rise. And whilst the market is predicting maybe 3 to 3.5% 3 over the next year or so, my own view is probably a 2% rise is more likely over that time period. But it could be worse and it could be quite quick. I wouldn't be surprised to see another rate rise next month. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.